Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on uh, everybody's reel. This is a Shakespeare reel, probably about 10 years old. It's one of those that everybody would buy uh, from a um, sporting goods store, from a, um, a general merchandiser like a Walmart. Um, just uh, usually attached to a combo. Uh, always in need of service, just like any other reel. Uh, if you take care of them, they will last. If you don't take care of them, they won't. In this case, this is a Shakespeare. It's the LXIV. Uh, it's got a ball bearing in it. And uh, you know, a lot of times I'm working on these two, three hundred dollar reels, but sometimes, you know, you need to work on every reel for everybody. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart. Uh, this reel was designed and made. We'll clean it up a little bit and we'll get it back out there fishing again. So <clears throat> as we start, you'll notice I wear a protective glove that keeps the the oils and lubricants and the like off my hand. I have a little parts tray behind me. And generally at this time of the video, I like to thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything it is that you're doing during the pandemic to keep all of us safe and to help us overcome this horrible disease. So I start by taking off the exterior parts. In this case, this reel has a handle that screws out. You can always tell whether it screws out or not by whether this side plate cap over here spins. And that's, an, that's a statement that's about 95% correct. Every now and then you'll wind up with an older reel that has a fixed cap, but it has a screw underneath that cap. So if you're having difficulty unwrapping the, uh, the handle, then by all means, go ahead and take that other cap off and check. All right, we're gonna remove the spool next. This is an all graphite reel or a plastic reel, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's got one ball bearing in it. Uh, it's a little dirty, we'll show you how to go clean that up. Next off, we want to take the shim washers for the spool height and the click ratchet, which makes the noise when the spool is in re uh, the letting out drag. Sometimes these can come off together, sometimes this little washer is particularly difficult. And sometimes it's the click washer that's difficult. And you can use a little pliers or something. It's not pressed on. It's just a little bit difficult to get that off. If you just rock it a little bit, it'll free it up generally. There we go. Well, sounded more dramatic than it actually was. Take that off. Now we have a um, 12 millimeter nut. You want to go ahead and remove that. Just need to find my 12 millimeter wrench. And this one on Titans in a normal fashion comes off by counterclockwise removal. You'll notice it has a little lock plate underneath there. And now you should be able to remove the rotor. So you can check underneath the rotor here. That's the bail trip. And what you want to do there is you want to check to make sure it's operating properly. You can see it is. And when it hits this ramp on this side, the ramp forces it to close release and you can see the bail trips back. So a little bit of oil on this just to keep it fresh. You can also oil the seams of the bail. You can put a little bit of oil on a line roller even though it's not a bearing. And uh, we're going to just put this aside. We're going to clean this with the other stuff when I get that off. All right next up then we got four side plate screws we're going to remove. And we'll show you how the reel is made inside. And when I remove these side plate screws, I like to take the screws, lay them on the bench. Because every now and then there's a smaller screw on one of these locations. And if there is, you just want to identify which one it is so you know where to reinstall it when you're done with the service. This reel said it was made in China. Shakespeare is part of uh, pure fishing. And uh, I imagine it's probably made in the same plant that they make Pan and Abu and the like. I can't say that with any certainty. 
but uh, typically what you'll find with the Shakespeare reels today is that they're a lower price point in terms of entry. That's why I said it's kind of everybody's reel. It's a general uh, reel. I don't want to say casual because certainly folks have fished these things every day, but uh, it's one that you would typically buy on a rod and reel combination uh, or to replace one that was on a reel, that, a rod that you had. All right, so the four case screws are out. They're all the same. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to place them into my parts tray. I'm going to use a little wedge. Just a little utility knife here just to kind of open it up. It seems a little sealed. There we go. And other than this being a lot of... Uh, gunk and grime, it seems to be okay. Got stuck in the bushing in the side there, that's okay. These are pretty good bushings. I've seen plastic bushings in a lot of reels. In this case, this bushing is a, uh, a nice brass bushing, so uh, good deal there. We have a cross arm that came out. We have the gear that came out. We have the shim that fell off that gear. And this is really just about cleaning and lubricating. You can see on this one that uh, it's not a brass, it's some kind of uh, general metal, pot metal, whatever uh, generally gets referred to as. And um, I'm going to take this off just to show you the balance of it. So I'm just going to lay these parts here. Hope I'll do a good cleaning. That's the bushing from the other side of the case. I'll take the whole assembly out so that you can see how this one is made. There's two screws up top here holding a collar on that holds the bearing. Just drop that screw off the table. But I was fortunate enough to catch that. There doesn't seem to be a difference here in terms of which side goes to the front. So we'll think that this one is evenly spaced and doesn't matter. But we'll check. These are steel screws because they're sticking into my screwdriver. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to paint that, point that one north so that I know which side that is. And now the whole assembly should be able to be removed. So we have our axle shaft. We have a bearing and a collar. And we have our little pinion gear and a spool shaft. I'm going to grab a wire brush just to clean out the grooves there. There wasn't much in that, but might as well clean it out. We can make sure that it's nice and clean because we're going to relube that. So I'm going to wipe out here the, the shaft of that. And now I'm going to use some fishing reel grease. I'm going to use Pen Precision Reel Grease as the uh, fishing reel grease for this week pair or overhaul. I'm going to make sure I get a goodly amount into the grooves on this pinion gear. You saw it came out totally dry. Also going to get a little bit of grease where that inside bearing is going to run. And we're going to put that bearing on next. And we're going to put the collar on. And we're going to oil that bearing. I'm going to use an aftermarket oil called Relex. It's a fishing reel oil. And I would recommend, regardless of what reel you're working on, that you use fishing reel grease and fishing reel oil. All right, it's done. So we can go back and clean the inside of this case first. Usually you find reels with too much grease. In this case, this reel hardly has any grease in it. So uh, just cleaning off what little there is of that. And we'll go take that pushing that came out. I'm going to reinstall that in the back of the case. Now we're going to put our pinion gear through, seat that, I'm going to seat the bearing, I'm going to grab that collar, and I, again, from the way that I was doing this, this is the orientation that I had it, and I always recommend if you're doing these kinds of things, take pictures, because uh, generally you won't find a schematic for a reel like this. And if you get stuck along the way, instead of having one of those moments, uh, you can simply go back to your, your picture and kind of look at it and figure it out. Thank goodness these screws are steel because 
having a little bit of difficulty as I usually do with small screws and the magnet on the screwdriver certainly helps that. So folks ask me, you know, how, how frequently should I do real maintenance? And of course that's one of those answers that you always answer with, it depends. But if you have a reel like this, and uh, this reel is, let's say it's been a backup for folks to uh, use when you go fishing, or it's uh, one for a beginner or whatever, and it doesn't see a lot of uh, uh, time fishing, then one year is perfect. Uh, do it right before the start of the season or the end of another season and uh, that'll keep it fishing for a long time to come. I just used a little bit of a general purpose degreaser. It's called Purple Power. I'm just going to use that to clean up the grit and grime that's on this reel. It's certainly accumulated here over time and uh, best to, to just kind of get it now while you're servicing it. Make it nice and clean for the, uh, the next go round of servicing. And I'm just using that kitchen scrubby to, uh, to kind of spread it around, make sure that it's cleaned it up. And now I'm using a paper towel to wipe it off. So one of the problems with these graphite cases is they, they get the, uh, the effect of the uh, sun, UV rays, and they dull. Folks ask me, what can I do to restore the luster of it? Well, you really can't. There's some things, I guess, that have momentary effectiveness, but over time it'll, it will resort back to the uh, fade from the sun, and uh, that's just something you live with. But you can always keep it clean, and keeping it clean is simply a matter of doing something like this. Just get the old uh, water residue, get the old fish residue, and whatever else might be laying around. Get it off the case, and... Uh, That'll last you a long, long time. All right, so we've oiled the contact points on the bale. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the bale then. I'm going to go grab that little set pin here. And this generally uh, is a good setup. That little bracket behind there keeps that um, nut from loosening kind of a tension sort of a thing. And uh, we'll just tighten that up. And before I go too much further, I want to give it a spin just to make sure it's doing what it should be doing. And that's what it should be doing. There you go. And then I also want to just connect for a moment here just to make sure that when we go to release Okay. When we go to install this, there's a little trip lever on here that's going to work the anti-reverse. There's old grease in here, probably the stuff that came from the factory. It's very old and very dried. Let's get all of that off. Same idea, use a cotton swab. Get this all off. Inspect the teeth. Make sure that all of the teeth are uh, in good fashion and not bent or chipped or missing. Do the same thing with this one. Now we put the bushing in. You want to put a little bit of grease so that this rides free in the bushing. You don't need to get any grease onto the shaft there. That's not turning anything, but you do want to get grease onto the teeth. I'm using an artist's brush. If you use an artist's brush, you need to be careful that uh, if it starts shedding hairs, you need to make sure that you get those hairs out of there. And then this piece is important to me, this little spring here. This operates the anti-reverse. You need to know that it's there. And when you go to install the main gear, you need to make sure that that spring winds up in that little uh, notch there. You can do that visually. Just look over the top and that's set properly just as it is there. Okay, we're going to go grab the axle shaft now. Do the same thing again. We're going to make sure that it's nice and clean. And put a light coating of grease on this one. You don't want to put a lot on there because as it goes through the pinion gear, 
that's a pretty tight fit and anything that's extra is just going to rub off on it. All right, with that up then, you want to turn your hole on this shaft so it's facing outward. Just grab that uh, brush, get a little bit of grease around the face, which is where the override, uh, the cross line arm is going to ride. You want to set this, this the easy way to do is get this washer off and I'm playing around with it from behind. And I just disrupted the main gear, so I want to make sure that I get that piece back in there. You'll take your crosswind arm then, get it into the hole of the axle shaft over the top, and lay it down. Now we can put that little extra piece on. We want to put Grease onto the axle shaft or the gear shaft on this side so that it spins freely in the bushing here. One more little cleanup here on this side when you get while you have it. It's a little bit easier to do it off the, the reel at this point. So let's just get that extra dirt and grease and grime on it. And this reel was operating okay, so I'm only going to think that it was probably just put in a garage or up in the storage rafters or somewhere and just uh, wasn't used for a while and that's when it became available somebody figured they weren't going to be using it okay and then what we have to do then is simply reinstall the case noticed when we took these out that all of these screws are the same size so it doesn't matter which point they go in And folks have asked me, can they use a mechanical screwdriver rather than a manual one that I do? And the uh, short answer is I prefer not to, particularly on reels like this. Uh, these plastic cases or graphite cases tend to bind. And if you uh, have a lot of torque in that uh, manual or in that um, electronic or mechanical screwdriver, you can bind the reel so that it's not working properly. So if you have an issue with hand strength, I would recommend that you go ahead and use that mechanical screwdriver, but back it off. Don't, uh, don't finish the turning of those screws. Leave them maybe a quarter inch out or an eighth of an inch out Leave them so that you can finish the tightening by hand and not risk binding the piece. Okay, so we just checked and made sure that this is working properly. It is. Next step then is put that click ratchet back on. Goes on a whole lot easier than it came off. And then we put that little shim washer on for the spool. We'll take our handle. That's got a little bit of junk on it as well, so let's get the uh, cleaner on that while we're at it. To keep your reels clean, they generally will not have a problem uh, in performance. It seems like when uh, reels get taken to the shore for, or the beach for the day or the lake, they wind up on the dirt and then they don't get cleaned off, but that dirt comes back to haunt folks. There you go, that's a nice little reel. Alright, so we're going to clean the spool and then I'll show you how to service the top end or at least what this top end is made out of. And uh, then we'll just put it together and uh, find, find a deserving person for this reel. Give it a second chance. This one came in a, in a parts lot that I bought. And I can only think that uh, it just wasn't being used. And got a little tired there. And uh, somebody just put it aside and said it's not worth fixing. Well, it's always worth fixing. All right, so there's a C-clip here, round clip that holds the drag stack in. I'm pretty much expecting to see um, hard washers, but I can always be surprised. And I'm surprised because we have quite a stack here, and they're felt. Oh, no, they're hard washers. All right, they are hard washers. Okay, we started with that. If we kept the sequence up here, just want to separate these but they're okay we can put a drop of oil on these I think we will because this one seems to have 
got a little bit stuck there. So let's go, we can oil these, there's no harm. Generally oil is used to keep washers flexible and uh, sometimes, oops, put the hard washer in. The, uh, sometimes it's a general lubricant, it doesn't do anything in terms of adding max drag or performance to the drag stack at all. This one's kind of surprising. It's got an awful lot of uh, drag washers in it for, uh, I'm going to guess, a 40 or a 50 size wheel. And uh, overall, give them a plus for that. Okay, so we just reinstalled the stack and now we have to reinstall that clip. Okay, so we've installed the ring then back onto the reel. So now you're hearing the effect of that click ratchet and that little plastic tongue on the inside of this. As I turn that over, I notice it's a little bit of dirt in there from storage. Let's get that out. Right, and then all we have to do is clean this top button. Put that back on, the drag adjuster button. And this reel will be ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you, the lessons learned here is that doesn't have to be an expensive reel to, to do the service on it. I mean, I appreciate that folks are living in a disposable society, but that's not needed nor necessary. You know, that one cleaned up. It, it has a nice clean shine to it. It's a nice reel. Single ball bearing is fine in this case. We saw that they've got uh, nice bushings in there, so uh, this reel will handle big fish. It's got good capacity on it. It's got a 4.8 to 1. Let's make sure we have an anti-reverse. We do. It locks up. Very good. A smooth operator for the, the segment that it was designed for. So uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video, uh, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have a reel, reel that needs to be repaired or serviced and you don't feel like doing it yourself, well then use the contact information at the back end of this video. Uh, send me an email and I'll be happy to uh, share with you how to get that done. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.